Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here from Love Do and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this basic snake setup in Houdini. Note this is purely about setting up the body and moving it along a spline. It's not actually a fully rigged snake skeleton, but it's still a fun one for some motion graphics work, so let's get into it. First I'll make a line with the direction going 1, 0, and 0. With the length of 35 and points up to 50. Next, drop a UV texture set to rows and columns and the class to points. Now make a point vop and dive in. Here we'll be giving this line a bit of shape. So do a vector of float on the UV and then make a ramp attribute on the X. Now hook up a fit and promote the max. Double click to turn this into a node and then make a multiply constant set to negative one and hook that to the minimum. Last, do a float to vector, dragging this into the Y value and add it to the original position. Now hop back out and since we have our fit changing this ramp for, uh, to negative values, I'm gonna value of negative one here will actually be zero. So if you start the curve at zero and then add a bit of shape here, we can see that happening and all right, so this is our base shape setup. So we want to extend the ends here so that we have space to move this along a longer spline. So make a point vop and hop in. I'll start on one end. So drop an import point attribute, setting it to first input and now make a constant and set it to zero and just hook that to the PT num here. Now if you just duplicate these two and change the constant on this one to 1 and then drop a subtract and subtract the two and then make a displace along normal hooked up to the position and hook the subtract to use as the normal. So make the displacement amount 1 and promote the scale so we can affect that. Now bind this out. It of course is moving everything in the same in the same amount. So in the group, just type zero so that we, we only affect the first point. And I'll crank the scale up to 25. So so that we have plenty of room to work with. Now we want this to happen on the other end of the line. So duplicate this and we're gonna change the point to 49 to get the end. And we're doing 49 instead of 50 because we start with zero. So 49 is actually the last point. Go inside and I'm going to change these constants to 49 and 48. Great. Now we want a bunch of points that are evenly spaced. So just drop a resample and set the length to 0.05. All right, let's get into animation now. I'm going to do this by dropping a carve node, unchecking this first U and checking on the second U. Now I'm just going to manually key this at the end to be 0.75 and start it at 0.6. Now if you turn on point numbers, you can see that we have a high value here at the end, but I want the zero to be the initial point. So drop a sort sop and just check on reverse points. Great. Now let's apply this to a spline that stays the same length. So I'm going to make another carve again, uncheck the first and check the second on, and I'm going to set it to 0.5 and this will be our rough length that the whole spline stays at. So copy that sword as well. And now just make an attribute copy and change that to P so that way we can copy the position onto this shorter spline. And you can see that we have it moving along the line. Now we want to have few less points, so we're going to do another resample and set it to 0.5. Now point numbers are already staying consistent, but just to set up a fail safe, I'm going to check on max segments and type in 110. That way we have a consistent 110 points throughout. Now I want to have each point look at the one before it to get a spline direction, so I'll grab that extend point bot 
delete the zero group up here and dive in. And I'm going to delete everything except the import point attributes and the subtract. Uncheck hooking this P as well. And hook the first PT num to the PT num and then drop a subtract constant and set it, it to one and put that into the second input. Again, the PT num. And now we're going to drop a normalize after the subtract so that we keep these values between negative one and one. Now I'm going to bind this both to the normal, but I'm also going to bind export a new attribute named dir for direction for us to use later. Hop back up and uh, one small thing that I found helped just to kind of smooth things out is just drop a smooth node and setting it to n, which will help our values, especially along the corners here. Now make a circle node set to polygon and divisions at six and the arc type to open. Now do a copy to points and you can see the general shape of our snake. So make a skin node, a reverse node and a normal node. And we've got a solid base. You can see that this end here gets a little messed up and that's because it's 0, 0.0, so it has nothing to subtract in our normal node that we set up here. So to fix that, I'm just going to go inside. We want it to copy the same normals that 0.1 has, so we're just going to do a compare on the PT num, setting it to equals equals 0, and then add that to the PT num. So we're saying if this is 0, 0.0, add 1, which will bring it to 0.1 essentially. And that's great. We got the end fixed. Now let's get a belly on this snake. So in the circle, we're going to make a group and set two points, naming it belly. In the base group, I'm going to select two points, which I'll just do three to four. Great. And I'm going to go with these two now down here. I'm going to drop a group promote and type belly, changing it to primitives. And I'm going to check on include only elements on the boundary. This will just contain it to the shared primitive we have as opposed to trying to evenly distribute it outwards to the ones on the side. So make a poly extrude and select our belly group. Bring up the distance and the inset and change this divided into two individual elements. And look at that, we got a snake belly. I'm just going to subdivide it to smooth things out, drop a normal, setting it to points. And we're almost there. We just got to add some scales now. All right. In the extrude, we're going to check on groups for the side and the front, and then make a blast node to get rid of those so that we don't put scales where the belly is. Now I drop a time shift, freezing it at the start and a scatter node bringing up the points a bit, and then go into the attributes tab and check on the source attributes to use. Drop in attribute interpolate. We're going to hook that up and to bring back our motion. Now I'm going to do a low poly scale for now. If you want to sculpt something and get in more details, of course, go for it. So I'm going to just make a sphere, setting it to polygon. I'm bringing the frequency down to one and I'm going to adjust the radius to be a bit longer and thinner. So something like 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 1.5. And I'm just going to make it uniformly a bit smaller, maybe like 0.3 and rotate it down about 20 degrees on the X axis. Drop a copy points and a normal and just merge that with the original so we can view what we're doing. This is kind of cool. It's a little bit spiky. It just kind of doesn't really make sense as scales. So let's actually adjust the normals so we can lay these scales flat against the skin. So make a point VOP before the copy and hop in. Now we'll actually bind in that dir attribute that we made and we're going to have the scales face along the curve. So we're going to change it to vector and hook that up to the N and it's a little nicer, but now they're all kind of facing the same direction. And 
the last thing we're going to do is we want to make an up attribute. Typically, you would think of just putting this at 0, 1, and 0 so that it's facing upwards, but we can actually use the normals from the skin so that it's facing outwards. So if you hook up the normal of the geo here, we'll have them pointing out. And there you have it. It's our cool little snake setup. There are definitely some more complex ways of doing this using matrices along the splines to have more control over the banking and twisting of the actual snake. And it also would work better to use matrices when it comes with dealing with more complex curves. But this is a solid base setup, especially for motion graphics use. So the project files for this are on our site. As always, hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time. <laughs>